horrific mural that was up in City Hall. And that was torn down on December 29th, 1966. Um, I would like to present to you Chairman O'Malley Ashitella, who's the leader of the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru Movement, and also the original art critic of that horrific mural that was, an, in, that was hanging in City Hall, Uhuru. I want to thank you, and again, uh, to that media that came out, and especially uh, to the Weekly Challenger um, from this community. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that this press conference was called uh, to announce how uh, the Uhuru movement and I uh, will move uh, with dealing with the 50th anniversary of the uh, removal of that mural from the wall of the city hall. But um, I think in the spirit of full disclosure, it's really important for me uh, to say that I am not now, nor have I ever been, an employee or surrogate for the YWCA, for the city of St. Petersburg, or the Holocaust Museum, uh, the primary forces that seem to be behind this current uh, effort uh, to misrepresent uh, the history of that mural coming down uh, and uh, to try and direct uh, the uh, redirect of what that history should look like. It's an entire historical revision that's coming from outside of our community. When I tore down that mural 50 years ago, I was loyal and committed only to this community, this black community. That was my only motivating force. It was what that mural meant to the black community of St. Petersburg and to black people in general. It was the fact that that mural was a reflection that horrible mural, that, that uh, despicable mural uh, was a reflection of the relationship that exists between black people and white people in this city and between black people and the city of St. Petersburg. That was my motivative. My motivation uh, was to deal with that reality and the conditions that my community suffered from at that moment. My involvement in the question today remains the same. My commitment is to the same black community. I am not committed to any uh, external force from this community. Uh, and I think it's important to say that. And I would ask that all the other pretenders who are talking about the mural uh, be able to say the same thing, uh, <clears throat> that uh, their interest is in this community, because this is the community that was insulted that was offended, that was slandered, about, was assaulted uh, by that mural being put up there. No other community. It wasn't anybody connected with the YWCA. Uh, it wasn't anybody connected with the Holocaust Museum. Uh, it wasn't anybody connected with the city of St. Petersburg. All of the, the institutions that I have just referenced uh, seem to have been quite satisfied with that mural being up there. It was only this community that felt the wound of having to go to a city hall uh, where that eight by four foot monstrosity uh, 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 hang uh, for more than 30 years. So I want to be clear about that. Uh, the next thing I want to do is to say that uh, we have identified uh, a real committee uh, an art committee uh, that can look at uh, and examine uh, what should replace that mural that was up there 50 years ago that the city, uh, even in all of its uh, grotesque uh, hubris, has uh, been unable uh, to replace up to now, some 50 years later. And uh, included in the uh, committee that we have selected. Uh, and I feel uh, capable of being the person to do this because I paid uh, for that mural with two and a half years of my life uh, and w in prison. And uh, with the slander that came with it, uh, the assault on me, my person, uh, my family, uh, along with other black people who took it down. There's nobody who's in this committee that the city 
ha has uh, pulled together that can make the same claim. Nor, not only can they not claim to have been involved in taking it down, they cannot even claim to have ever been involved in the struggle to better the conditions of black people independent of their relationship with the Holocaust Museum, the YWCA, and the city government that put the mural up in the first place. So I think that uh, there is some issue of integrity that's associated uh, with this entire campaign, and I want to make it clear uh, how I understand some of these differences. So uh, for this committee, uh, we have 23-year-old uh, Marquis uh, Hill, uh, who studied contemporary fine art and uh, art history at the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, as well as practice sculpture, performance, and mixed media composition. He is with us here. Um, we have uh, uh, Gazi Kozo, uh, who is the president of the St. Petersburg branch of the International People's uh, Democratic Uhuru Movement, uh, he is a cultural icon uh, in his own right, having developed a tremendous social media following with his cutting edge video blogs and live reports from the front lines of the rising African resistance in Ferguson, Baltimore, and now uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida. He is ageless. <laughs> he is here uh, with us. Uh, Akile uh, Anai, who is a 19-year-old uh, resident and graduate uh, of Gibbs High uh, School. And I think it's important to announce uh, uh, Akile, to put her forward, because uh, there is a, uh, an obvious assumption on the part of the people who would hijack the history of our community and that mural uh, that it is something they can do because only uh, uh, older people would be uh, concerned about the question. Akile is 19. She's a graduate of Gibbs High School, participated in the art program there. There is a 16 year old Yashik, uh, I'm sorry, there is a 16 year old Cleopatra uh, Zuri, who is a student at Gibbs High School. Uh, Yashika Clemens, who uh, is the mother of three, of one uh, child who was 16 years old, uh, who was among the three children uh, killed, uh, murdered on March 31st by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. We thought it was quite important uh, to have uh, her here because uh, when the people who are engaged in the sham that they call uh, uh, a process of replacing the mural, they talk about wanting to do something that shows the, the great improvement in civil rights and inclusivity that has occurred in the city of St. Petersburg, I think it's important. Uh, and they say they want the mural to be representative of, uh, of the circumstances and history that was responsible for its removal. And I think uh, Yashika Clemens, uh, the mother of uh, dead 16-year-old girl murdered by the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department is quite representative of the history that was responsible for its being removed, and it's important for her to be here. Uh, we are talking about, uh, uh, I think I may have uh, mentioned uh, everyone who, who we're putting forward. Oh, and then there's uh, uh, Daniel Kenyon, uh, who uh, is an, a local artist. Uh, of uh, some uh, renown uh, who has, uh, whose artwork uh, has been uh, represented in, in various institutions uh, in the Tampa Bay area, at least. I want to say that I'm really happy that the city of St. Petersburg has uh, come up uh, with the $50,000 award uh, to the artists selected for this uh, this campaign. Now, the city of St. Petersburg, the arts, the, the Holocaust Museum, the YWCA, uh, or the other forces who uh, are involved in this process have now come up with $50,000. Uh, initially, they were talking about $10,000 to award someone. And I think that uh, that's, that's good that the award uh, has been elevated. Uh, and I want to tell people who are interested in uh, providing art 
uh, to the committee that could be looked at uh, should uh, contact us through um, uh, our website, uh, uh, theburningspear.com, theburningspear.com. And uh, we will initiate a process to select uh, an artist. But I have to say that we're talking about, we, we'd only want black artists uh, to submit your work. Uh, that we have gone beyond that day uh, when anybody else uh, can have uh, any part of the process of defining who we are uh, as a people. The city of St. Petersburg allowed some artists independent of our community <coughs> and our uh, charge uh, to do that uh, some years ago when they put up that uh, despicable mural. Uh, and it is clear uh, from the fact that that mural was put up there that the city of St. Petersburg had some interest in how black people are depicted. And so uh, we appreciate the fact that their interest is there, that they want to give $50,000 uh, to an artist that can do it. So we will select the artists from this community. And black people uh, should be the only artist uh, that offers anything uh, to be considered uh, for that. So, uh, and we accept the $50,000 uh, that the uh, city uh, is offering. And what we hope is that uh, this is something that uh, the city will quickly uh, connect, contact us uh, uh, to uh, give us uh, information about how this process can move forward in terms of our having access to the money. Another thing I want to say is that the, the process that the city has been involved in from the very beginning of this discussion has been extraordinarily dishonest. It has been disrespectful to the black community uh, who uh, that was at the, uh, that was the butt of the joke uh, that was represented by that caricature uh, that was supposed to be uh, black people uh, that was on the wall of the city uh, hall. And um, the reality is that we will take, again, take possession um, uh, of this process and, um, and the decision about uh, how uh, this should look is, will come from the black community and the black community alone, that nobody else will participate in this discussion. And, the interest of the city in having black people depicted on that wall uh, is something that we think uh, we shall take advantage of and have black people ourselves be the one to determine what that should look like. So uh, I wanted to say that this I've heard through the media I've, since the since we first intervened in this process that that the government uh, and its surrogates uh, have employed to deal with the mural. I continue to hear, uh, especially uh, after our protest, that uh, the persons involved in this uh, sham was either in touch with me or gonna be in touch with me and they were gonna notify me. And the fact is that they have not done that. That has never been from the very beginning of this process one could perhaps have some respect for the process. If, if the city, uh, the YWCA, or the Holocaust Museum uh, had come and said, look, we really know a horrible thing was done to the community and that you were the person who uh, was responsible for removing that, and we'd like to know if there any, is anything we can do uh, to help you uh, in the community uh, deal with that mural, that would have been at least uh, some signal of respect uh, for the integrity of the community. But to hear only after we protest what it is that they're about to do, that if I would like to, I could participate in the process. And I'm here to remind them that the process started 50 years ago, that they are late comers. And the reality is that we would give some consideration, possibly, uh, to allowing uh, somebody from that committee, perhaps, uh, to sit on the committee that we have uh, organized. 
but they can't allow me to participate in a process that they have initiated 50 years later. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense, uh, and it lacks uh, any kind of integrity, and again, it's disrespectful. <laughs> Where we have the same social forces who are responsible for the mural having been put there in the first place, now telling me, uh, after I protest what they're doing, that if I would like to, I could participate in their process. I've already begun that participation. I am the one who made the initial criticism of the art. You know, it's just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense at all. And I'm told that uh, I read a newspaper article that, uh, rather, had it read to me that uh, that uh, they ha there was a meeting that happened, and I didn't show up. And they said it was, uh, and they were quite disappointed. Um, it, was, uh, it was a public meeting, they said. And then it was slipped into the article uh, was the fact that the only people there was the so-called committee and the press. Uh, this public meeting that they had was only attended by them. And they said the press, but I got a hunch it wasn't the press. I had a hunch even that was some selective press. I don't know if the Weekly Challenger was there. You understand? Uh, and so <clears throat> this is the way they, you know, have, have, uh, have treated this question all along. And then I read in the newspaper uh, that they're going to have a meeting on July 12th, and they hope I show up for that. <laughs> and that what they're going to do now is formally invite me uh, to come to the meeting on July 12th. I think on yesterday, uh, somebody associated with the Holocaust Museum, I think Herb Schnitzer is I think Snitzer, Snitzer uh, I think he uh, 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 said that, uh, made a call to this office and said, tell me, to tell people to tell me that uh, soon I will be receiving a written invitation to attend their meeting. <laughs> and I wanted to see how much time Herb's spent in jail for taking that mural down. <clears throat> uh, uh, he is a contemporary. He could have done it. He's old enough to have been there. Jody was only seven. Jody Wall was only 17 years old uh, when he went to jail uh, for taking that mural down. So it's a criminal enterprise, and we have no respect for it. Just like they have no respect for the black community, uh, we have no respect uh, for what it is that they're doing. And I want to just make this comment uh, and then open it up. They talk about the events leading to the removal of the mural. It's really interesting that SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee that I, I led uh, during that time, that took that mural down, had begun uh, protests. And our initial protest was organized around the fact that the city of St. Petersburg was receiving $50 million in federal funds that they decided to use to beautify the downtown white St. Petersburg while the African community lived in the muck and mire of colonial oppression. And we felt that was a distorted uh, understanding of what should be happening and that money should be coming to the community. The mural became symbolic of that kind of relationship and we announced that we were going to begin demonstrating. And right away, there was a select group of black people <clears throat> from this community. I began holding secret meetings with the press. I began holding secret meetings with the press and denouncing the fact that we were going to have the demonstrations. And these were very important and respectable Negroes, sort of like some of them who are sitting on this current committee, acting in very similar ways with their secret meetings with the press, uh, that they belatedly say that I could have been there. Uh, the fact is that on December, on, on, on December 25th, four days before that mural was torn down, SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, had a demonstration, that's Christmas, in front of the church of the head Negro preacher in this town uh, that was responsible for participating in those meetings with secret meetings with the press. So, I mean, this is part of the contradiction that we experienced then is part of the contradiction my community experiences today. <laughs> that the very important, respectable uh, Negroes, the ones with the uh, 
the names and phone numbers of the mayors and really important people and the heads of the Holocaust Museum and the YWCA in their back pocket. The one uh, that receives fundings and retirement funds and are connected with all of those resources, uh, those are the ones who uh, uh, are participating in this process today just as their, uh, just as their predecessors, uh, class associates did then. They were the ones who, after the mural was torn down, hated the fact that I did it that way. They hated the mural belatedly. They hated the mural. They just like, didn't like the way uh, we took it down. And if we hadn't taken it down that way, it'd still be there. The YWCA never protested it at all, nor did the city of St. Petersburg, obviously, that put it up there. In fact, the mayor argued in letters to us that how our Negro minorities, our minorities have to learn not to be so thin-skinned <clears throat> in uh, response to our protest about that. I think it's important uh, uh, to say this that uh, there are a lot of elements involved in this, and that's why uh, the same uh, forces that participated in one way or another, historically, in putting that mural up and oppressing our community are the forces now that intend to define what that mural was about and what should go up, and we say it won't happen. My last word on this is, is this, that they are not going to be successful in replacing that mural in the fashion that they're trying to do. I'm just saying that. I don't care if they have permission from the Holocaust Museum, uh, from the YWAC, uh, YW, uh, what is it, YWCA, or from the city of St. Petersburg, because all of the institutions I just mentioned, with the exception of the Holocaust Museum that didn't exist at that time, uh, all of them that I just mentioned uh, seem to be okay uh, with the fact that that mural was up there in the beginning. And I guess the Holocaust Museum didn't exist at that time because it probably seemed inconceivable to put a Holocaust Museum in the middle of the black and of the city of St. Petersburg, uh, where the real Holocaust had been committed historically against black people and not against Jews. And so uh, it didn't make sense then, 50 years ago. It doesn't make sense today. And so those committed, those groups, those institutions are not going to be able to determine uh, our history. Nobody else is going to do that anymore. We are going to do that. Even if we had to rush through a hail of gunfire to stop that mural, this project that they're talking about, it is not going to happen. It was impermissible for me to take the mural down the way I did on the 29th. And if they put something else up there uh, that goes outside of the process that we are initiating with this community, it will come down again. So that's my final statement on that question. So if there's any other, if there are any other questions or anybody else uh, who you would speak to who's here, uh, please uh, feel free to do that. Again, for the $50,000, we want to thank uh, the city uh, and its, uh, what do you call it, uh, people who are involved in the same gang, what do you call them? Uh, the same, yeah, co-conspirators. <laughs> Uh, we want to thank you for coming up with that money, the $50,000. <laughs> we can certainly use it. <laughs> and uh, the artists, uh, black artists out here, can certainly use it. And uh, in fact, we may use it not just for one artist, but we may pick a, a group of artists to collectively work on it. Uh, uh, and as much as black artists have been ripped off historically, uh, uh, even that, that grotesque thing they had up there before. If they were really interested in portrayal of black people, there were all kinds of artists in our community who could have done it. And so, uh, so I just wanted to make that statement. And I don't know if, uh, if Ghazi or Marquise would say anything before we open it up. So is there, uh, are there any uh, questions that, in, that anyone uh, would raise? Media, I see Channel 9 camera is here. And uh, yeah. No, you would know more than I think Channel Nine was there. Where, I don't even know where the meeting happened. It wasn't even in the news. It wasn't even in the newspaper where the meeting happened. This public meeting that they had, that only they and the media were invited to. Where did it happen? The newspaper didn't. Maybe the newspaper doesn't want anybody to know where it happened. The media didn't report it. Where did the meeting happen? No, I wasn't there, and they're surprised I didn't show up. 
<laughs> me and anybody else. They're surprised nobody showed up. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody here know where the meeting happened? No. You, you don't know? A month and a half of the meeting happened a couple of days ago. <laughs> Nobody knows where the meeting happened. So it's a, it's a well-kept secret. Yeah, yeah, it's a well-kept secret. We want the city to turn over the 50 grand so that we can go ahead and initiate this process and bring some artists together and bring this community together. Um, to make a decision about how we should be reflected, how we should be reflected. We don't want the, the Holocaust Museum to make that decision. We don't want the YWCA to make that decision. And we damn sure don't want the St. Petersburg uh, city government to make that decision. If they believe that there was something historically significant about that mural, then it seems to me that they should come to me, and it should have come to me a long time ago and asked me how to deal with it. This community, independent of any involvement of the city, the Holocaust Museum, or the YWCA, this community, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, the Black Power Advocates of the Day, are the, is, the, is the one that came and took that mural down. And we will decide what replaces it or anything. We will replace the mural, or we might replace the city hall. So, and we can see the kind of interest that the, the media has in furthering this question. They could go to a secret meeting someplace that nobody else knows about, that they don't even say where it occurred. But they can't come up to a press conference from the one who tore the damn mural down. I'm the one who tore them. I'm the one who went to prison for that mural. Yeah. Anyway, anybody, anything else? Well, the committee, uh, I'm not sure if the artists who are on the committee, there's a possibility that one of the artists on the committee will participate. Uh, uh, but yes, 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 okay, yeah. Uh, we'll give that, make that information uh, uh, available to you. Uh, but uh, they are Daniel Kenyon, Kenyon, C-A-I-N-I-O-N. He is an artist uh, locally, uh, Marquise Hill, uh, whom I've just identified, uh, Yashika Clemens, uh, who is a courageous 37-year-old uh, um, black woman from this community who's, who lost her child to a police murder on March 31st of this year it's by the Pennsylvania County Sheriff's Department. Yeah, we'll make that information available to you. Yes. So, all right, is there anything else? I want to just uh, really express appreciation uh, for you coming out and a real serious appreciation to you uh, from the Weekly Challenger. Um, you've been in this community forever, you know, and, and made every effort to serve this community. And I really appreciate that. And that's not something that we can say of any other media that's here. Um, so thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Uhuru.